Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is temperature, thermal energy, and heat, and correlates with chapter 13 in your textbook. Your key concepts for this video are what determines the temperature of an object, how is thermal energy different from heat, how is heat transferred, and how do different materials respond to heat. So when we talk about temperature in science, we're talking about the average kinetic energy of all the particles in an object. So some particles in an object might have more kinetic energy, and other particles might have a little bit less, but the average of them is what gives us their temperature. And you can think back when we studied phase changes. Gases have more energy and they move more than, say, liquids or solids. They have a higher temperature because the movement of those molecules adds up to a higher average kinetic energy. Whereas the liquids, they're moving less, they have a lower average kinetic energy. You can also talk about temperature as being relative, just like motion. You can be comparing it to something else. So, for example, you might feel some water and it feels cold because compared to your body temperature, it is. But compared to the air temperature, it's a little bit warmer. So, temperature can both be the average kinetic energy, and this is where we're looking at numbers, or it could be just a relative, oh, that feels hot or that feels cold. So, when we're talking about temperature in terms of the numbers, there are three temperature scales that we use. The one you're most familiar with, most likely, is the Fahrenheit scale. This is the one we use in the United States. Um, so boiling point of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Freezing point of water is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And absolute zero, which is the point at which all molecular motion stops, so that kinetic energy of the particles moving around as they cool down, they slow down, slow down, slow down, till they reach absolute zero and they stop. That's negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. But you know, because I rant and rave when you try and tell me temperatures in Fahrenheit, that in science, we use Celsius, mostly. So for that, boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, freezing point, 0 degrees Celsius, and absolute zero is negative 273 degrees Celsius. But as you study science more, you'll learn that these negative temperature numbers can really affect some calculations. So Celsius is not actually the SI unit of temperature. The SI unit of temperature is a Kelvin. So the boiling point of water is 373.15 Kelvin. The freezing point, which in Celsius is zero, in Kelvin is 273.15. And absolute zero is zero Kelvin. Absolute zero is based off the Kelvin scale. So here is where that molecular motion has stopped. If you need to convert between Celsius and Kelvin, it's super easy. Just add 273.15 to your Celsius, and that'll give you Kelvin, or subtract 273.15. And that makes it really easy to convert between these two units. So thermal energy versus heat. Thermal energy is the total energy of all the particles in an object. And it depends on three things. One, the temperature, hot tea versus cold tea. If you have the same amount, the hot tea has more thermal energy because it's a higher temperature. The number of particles. The more particles you have, the more thermal energy you have. That's why this small but steaming hot hamburger has less thermal energy than this glacier. Remember we talked about in class, the hot hamburger could be like two high school seniors and the giant glacier could be like 500 kindergartners. While two high school seniors are much stronger, maybe hotter in temperature, 500 kindergartners are more numerous. So while they might not be as strong, if you had to fight both of them, those 500 kindergartners are probably going to overpower you. So they have more thermal energy. And then lastly, and we're not going to discuss this much in this class, but you do need to be aware of it, is particle arrangement can affect thermal energy as well. So on to heat. Heat is the transfer of thermal energy. And heat always goes from something warmer to something colder. And this is the law of thermal equilibrium. Basically, things will move from warmer objects to cold objects and back and forth and back and forth until they reach the same temperature, which is why if you leave like a hot drink out on the counter or a cold drink out on the counter, eventually it all reaches the same temperature of room temperature. Also, not that you should correct your parents, but if you're ever standing in front of the fridge like this, and you're trying to decide what to eat, and they're like, ah, shut the door, you're letting all the cold out. 
don't correct them, but technically they're wrong. You're not letting the cold out because cold does not travel to warm. Warm travels to cold. So technically, you're letting all the warmth in, not the cold out. So let's talk about how heat is transferred. We taught, learned about this in sixth grade, so we're just briefly going to review. You've got your three different types, conduction, convection, and radiation. Now conduction, remember duction, D, direct touching. So anything that's directly touching, those molecules are traveling through. Now convection, I remember the V because it's moving or like vents move air. Convection is the movement of heat through the fluid. And then lastly, radiation is what happens when you don't need matter to feel the heat. You don't have to be touching it. It doesn't have to be moving by you. You can just feel it. Now radiation is special because it's the only one that can travel through space. So how do different materials respond to heat? This too is review. You've got your conductors, which most conductors are metals, but there are some other materials that act as good conductors, and they easily transfer thermal energy. Whereas insulators resist that thermal energy transfer. And back to our periodic unit, nonmetals tend to be excellent conductors. This is why on pots and pans, you tend to have plastic handles rather than metal handles. Those metal handles will heat up. Or if a jar gets stuck on, a lid gets stuck on a jar, you can heat up the lid by running under hot water and hot things expand so that metal lid will expand a bit faster than the glass jar, which makes it easier to take off. That's it. Be sure your notes hit all the key concepts and vocabulary, and feel free to try this challenge question.